Hello friends, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be discussing my current MS symptoms. Just as an FYI, these aren't necessarily the symptoms that I have during a relapse. These are symptoms that I have day to day. It's pretty much the symptoms that I have now as a result of the attacks that I've had. So like the damage that's been done to my brain, how does that actually impact me day to day? When I'm in, or when I'm having a relapse, I'm very, very physically disabled. But day to day or when I'm in remission, you wouldn't necessarily know Know by looking at me that I have MS. I don't have an awful lot of physical symptoms so therefore the a majority of the symptoms that I'm gonna say now are invisible symptoms if you will. So MS is described as an invisible illness for that reason that a lot of the symptoms that people have you can't necessarily see them. So let's get into it. Oh also side note this is how MS impacts me. This doesn't mean that every single person with MS will be the same. People will have different data today's symptoms so just as an FYI it's very different for each person yeah just to kind of bring awareness to some people's symptoms will be different to my symptoms if that makes sense okay so I'm just going in with a primer which is from Sculpted by Amy whoa beauty base so the first symptom that I'd like to discuss is short-term memory issues so um, my short-term memory is massively affected since getting diagnosed with MS. I forget so much things. A lot of the time I forget conversations that I've had with people or like people will tell me something and it could be like big news. Not necessarily like massive news, but they might tell me something about someone. Like let's say someone was like leaving my job. They'd be like, oh, such and such a person is leaving. But then like a couple of months later, I'd be like, Joe, I haven't seen in ages, blah, blah, blah. And they'd be like, yeah, that's because they don't work here anymore. Sorry, going in with the e.l.f. halo glow. I love this stuff. It gives you just such a lovely glow on your skin. Also, sorry, I don't know if you can hear all that squeaker downstairs. That would be Nala. <laughs> yeah, like I'll just forget. Well, that's like a, a big thing, like not remembering that someone doesn't work in your job anymore. Or like could be news about them, about wh whoever I'm talking to, they might tell me some news. Like not like, oh, I'm moving gaff because that's something I will absolutely remember. But like, if it's not something like massive, there's a very high chance that I'm not gonna remember that. And I hate it because it makes it look like I'm not paying attention or I'm not listening or I don't care about what that person's telling me, but that's not the case. Or I could be talking or I might ask something, I might ask someone a question and then literally a couple of minutes later, I'll ask that question again or be like, did I mention that blah, 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 blah? And they'd be like, yeah, like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> it's not great because yeah, it just makes it look like you're not paying attention or you're just not engrossed in the conversation. And I hate that. Other examples might be like, I could go to a shopping center to get like groceries or even like if I went to a shopping center and I was getting a couple of things like outside of the supermarket, there's a very high chance that I'm not gonna come home with everything. I know that the, the, the list is on my phone. I know I've made a list and I'll check it several times while I'm up there and I'll mark them off. Like I'll, I'll cross them out when they're done or I'll delete them so I know that I have that thing, either purchased or sorted or whatever it is. But whatever reason, like sometimes I'll just be like, all of a sudden, oh yeah, I have everything on the list and I, I, I won't have everything on the list and then I'll get home and for whatever reason, I'll go into my notes and I'll be like, oh, I didn't get such, and such a thing. Even though I have my list in my phone and I'm checking it several times in there, I'm still forgetting. And like, I know everyone will be like, oh yeah, but like sometimes I'll go to the grocery shop and you know, I've gone in for such and such a thing and then they'll come home without it. I know that happens to so many people, but it's just very frustrating when you, even though you have a list and you check it several times that you don't actually remember until you get home because all of a sudden your brain is just told you, oh no, 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 I, I do have everything. I do have everything on my list, but you absolutely don't. Fuck, I was meant to do my brows first. Let's just go do that real quick. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other examples. No, I think you, you, like you get the picture. Short term memory, I can forget conversations I've had and it could be very short periods of time. Like we could have been speaking 10 minutes ago and I'll ask the same question. Now, sometimes I'll know I've asked it depending on what the answer is. Like sometimes it'll sound familiar and I'll be like, oh, did I already ask this? Or if it's someone that like I'm not that close to, <laughs> I can tell I've already, said a piece of information or I can tell I've already asked a certain piece of information or a certain question because of their reaction on their face they'll be like um and they'll just repeat it because they don't want to be rude <laughs> I think like the short-term memory also ties in with a bit of confusion let's say I have an appointment for the dentist I will put that in my calendar I get reminder emails from the 
practice and like I check my calendar every day and I check it the week before to know what's coming up. I have a system in place to try make me not forget but like sometimes I will still forget like getting appointments mixed up but I, I don't know it, it's kind of a mixture of short-term memory but also confusion because I'm not no it's probably actually more short-term memory because even though like I have a system in place to not forget my appointment I'll still mix it up because I'll I'll forget like sometimes I'll go down a day early for my appointment because I'm so certain that I checked it and it was the day that I go down and it's not and like there has been times where like I know that I have the appointment I'll wake up I'll check my calendar I know right of the dentist later and then by that late afternoon I'll have forgotten about it because like that one time happened to me and I was downstairs I'd finished work because I was working from home and I remember I got like a reminder like prompt thing from my calendar to be like dentist in 15 minutes and like I knew I had it because I, I checked my calendar and I had received two reminder emails from the practice but like I had just forgotten within those couple of hours that I had this appointment so it's very inconvenient because I hate wasting people's time I hate it that's how someone earns their money do you know that sort of way so I just think when it comes to appointments oh, I don't know I just think it's really respectful to be on time so I hate that now because of this illness that I am late for things or that like I get mixed up I've luckily never fully not shown up to an appointment but like that dentist appointment I had I was I was late for it because it was 15 minutes before I was I was supposed to be there and I had to like leg it out of the gaff now luckily it's only down the road but still like I was late for it and I hate that and I hate making up excuses like obviously I know it, it is a, a gen <laughs> it's a genuine excuse but like still I don't want to be that person to be like Oh, I'm like, I'm sorry I'm late, but it's because I have MS or it's because of this, it's because of that. Because at the end of the day, I'm late, do you know? Anyways, yeah, so that's kind of all like the short-term memory examples that I've got for you. I might touch on confusion just as I've already brought it up, but like I can get confused over very, very, very basic things. And I think it's like my ability to retain information like someone could even just be described like like let's say we were traveling somewhere and someone will be like oh yeah we're gonna do x y and z today that could really confuse me because i can't retain what the first pieces of information are I suppose it actually does then tie in with the short-term memory issues because i just find it hard to let's say it's a load of sentences or there's a lot of information in the one sentence i find that hard to remember going in with some sculpted by amy dewy foundation okay sorry i just uh, spilt foundation on my jumper which i'm a little bit worried about in case that doesn't come out <laughs> so what was i saying some sort of confusion now maybe i'm wrong but i think it's the fact that i can't retain a lot of information and i actually remember when i was doing a research study they would like read out a very very short story and i had to then recall all as much information as i possibly could about the the story or like try say the story back word for word as best you could like it didn't have to be every single word exactly the same but like they were trying to see like if you could retain all the information but anyways i think that that's why i get really confused because i'll retain some information and then not other information then i'm like wait how are we going to do that because that doesn't make sense because i won't have remembered a certain piece of information now when it comes to like technical stuff i am i think i'm okay and i think it's because i'm like really really paying a lot of attention and i'm trying to focus but like i wouldn't have that same level of con concentration in a normal conversation do you know that sort of way a normal conversation shouldn't be you shouldn't need that level of focus and concentration as you would let's say in something really technical like let's say when i'm in work i would need way more concentration than i would in just like a, a normal conversation do you know that sort of way and it's gas but it's not funny <laughs> when eve like my sister is explaining something to me or like we're having a conversation she can always tell when i haven't a clue what's going on because i have this like blank expression over my face and i'm just like and she'll just start pissing herself laughing because she's like, you haven't a clue what I'm talking about. And I'm like, nope, not a Scooby-Doo. I ain't got a Scooby-Doo. And like, obviously I'm saying these in a quite lighthearted way, but like they do massively impact your life. Okay, I'm gonna do some concealer under my eyeballs. I'm going in with the Vive concealer. Love this stuff. High coverage, we love it. I have some spots down here I wanna cover. A little bit of brightness on the fur. Okay, next one is quite a big symptom that I have and it's brain fog. I would say a lot of people with MS experience brain fog. So like for me, it would be not being able to get my words. And like it doesn't necessarily have to be a 
technical word it could just be like the most basic thing ever like that you would say in everyday language just because of that brain fog i cannot for the life of me remember it and then i find it really difficult to try and explain the thing that i'm trying to think of because of that brain fog it's probably would it be the most challenging it kind of is challenging especially in work if you're like asked your opinion on something or someone asks you a question and you can't get that word out of your mouth it looks like you either weren't paying attention it looks like you actually don't know what you're fucking talking about or, and like your your input isn't really valuable and it's very frustrating because unless you've experienced brain fog you don't know what it's like to forget words like for me it can be a bit embarrassing like if, if i'm around my friend don't care but like in work and stuff i hate it like i hate being on a meeting and like not being able to get my words it's very very frustrating or like sometimes my speech will come out quite slowly and i think it's all because like my thinking can be quite slow as well. So like it's a mixture of like brain fog, but also like trying to think quickly. I just, I can't do it. Now don't get me wrong, like there's some things where I'm like, la, 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 I don't, there won't be any stopping me. But like, if I have to try and think about what I'm saying, if it's something kind of complicated and I'm trying to then speak about that, it'll be like really slow. There'll be really long pauses between my words. And then like I have the issue where I just, can't get the word majorly inconvenient and i don't know it's just like it's not ideal when you're in work so yeah i'd kind of put them together like brain fog and thinking slowly along with speaking slowly if you are to watch my videos back unedited like sometimes my videos are up to 50 minutes and i get it down to 20 minutes because i'm just like do you know what I mean? But I guess that's the beauty in editing. You don't necessarily know that. And like some days will be good and some days won't be. And like to be fair, like people that I'm around most days, like that I'm around in my everyday life, give me that space to try and think of the word, which is nice because it, it is frustrating when you're, well, one, it's frustrating if you're paused and then someone swoops in and says their piece and you're just like, no, I wasn't finished. No. <laughs> and then it can be really frustrating when people are trying to constantly guess what the word is. Like, don't get me wrong, sometimes, like if they get it right the first time round, I'm like, yes, brilliant, thank you. But like, when it's multiple times, it's, it just gets frustrating because then like, I can't actually concentrate on trying to remember the word because you're just throwing words at me left, right and center. And like, I, I understand like people are trying to do what they think is the right thing, but sometimes you just gotta give people the space to remember the words. Moving on to the next one, this, Next one is a very, very, very common symptom that I have. I I don't know how to explain it. I think there is a term for it, but I don't know what it is. And it's basically where I mix up words in a sentence. I put them in the wrong order or I mix letters up from multiple words to make new words in a sentence. Now, if I try to do that, like if I try to plan that type of sentence, I couldn't do it. I actually have a list because when it happens it's kind of funny i'm not gonna lie and i write them down for that reason so i'll give you some examples of what i mean first example i'm just reading it off my phone you marry vel way have you may very well have you marry vel way have you may very well have and like the thing is when i'm when i say something like that you know exactly what I'm trying to say, but it's just like, oh, that's not grammatically correct, or they're not actual words, but I think I know what you mean. <laughs> Don't break it if it's not fixed. Don't fix it if it's not broken. Don't break it if it's not fixed. <laughs> Don't fix it if it's not broken. <laughs> Melon Heron or Miran. <laughs> Melon Heron or Miran Helen for Helen Miran. So like sometimes I'll be like, I'll say, Melon Heron. Oh no, sorry, I mean Mirren Helen. No, no, I actually mean Helen Mirren, like the actress. And like, it's so funny because I'll like correct myself, but I'll correct myself wrong again. <laughs> Seven and the White Divorces? No. See? <laughs> Seven and the White Divorces? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. That one was a bit like, definitely I threw a new word in there, which can also happen. So Seven and the White Divorces. D Seven and the White Divorce for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So like, I've obviously heard a word in there and it kind of rhymed with divorce, like dwarfs, divorce. Give me every menu on the vegan option. Give me every vegan option on the menu. <coughs> Car sparking paces? Car parking spaces? <laughs> like you can't deny it that it's it's funny. Like you can't say it's not funny. It's, it's pretty funny. Like if I tried to do that, you best believe I would not be able to. 
no, 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 no siree. Because like I'm dyslexic as well. Like the fact that I'm dyslexic, it's now enhanced. I don't know if that's correct, but that's what it feels like. Because I feel like that happens a lot of people, like every now and again, they'll mix up a letter or they'll mix up a word and it'll be in the wrong orientation and it's funny, but like this happens, I would say on a daily basis. Oh, I better set that underneath my eyeballs. I'm just gonna actually blend it a little bit with my beauty blender. Okay, and then I also, I'm gonna set it under my eyes with this Sculpted by Amy press powder. I used this for the first time yesterday. Obsessed. It just gives you that blur effect under your eyes. Really impressed with it. Very much so. Oh, gorge. And it's real bright as well. We love that. We love a bright under eye. Just gonna put a little bit on the fur. A little bit on the fur. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of, you know the use. No, it's actually not the use because it's my first time using it. <laughs> Blusher. It's my first time using it and I'm really excited because it's Cash Beauty and I have the highlighter stick from Cash Beauty. I have a feeling this is gonna be very pigmented and I probably shouldn't put that much on, but also we love a bit of blush. We love a blush moment. <laughs> okay, on to the next symptom. Okay, so this one is standing for long periods of time. Standing definitely is something that I struggle with. I don't know if you'd really put that down as an invisible symptom, seeing as it, it's a physical feeling, if you will. The thing is like, let's say I get on a bus. No one knows by looking at me that I have MS. So like, I'm gonna use my beauty blender just to give me some assistance. Yeah, no one knows by like looking at me that I have MS. But like if I was getting the bus into town, now not every day, but like some days it would be quite bad that I'm like, oh my God, my legs are, aching and then other days i'm grand like i'll always try look for a seat but like there are days where i'm like especially if a bus is packed i hate getting on it because i'm like uh oh i hope i don't get tired or like if i go to a bus stop i remember one time being in town and i was like i really 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 need to sit down i didn't have it in me to be like can i sit down now it's not very often do you know what i mean and like I don't blame anyone for that. Like, there's no way no one would know that I have MS, do you know? So, and look, it's every now and again, it's really not the worst, but it is a symptom that I would experience. Highlighter on the highest part of my cheekbones, my nose, under my lip, up here. Oh, next one, again, this happens really regularly. I get run down very quickly. Now, I will say, that this mainly happens when I'm working. So for me, a lot of mental exertion or like concentration or like being in a very like technical environment, that's what wears me down. That level of concentration constantly and thinking, you know, that's really what gets me run down. It wouldn't necessarily be like physical exertion that wears me out. Like, as you, you've seen, like I've, I've done festivals, like I've done loads of festivals and I did loads last year. So like, it's not necessarily a men or sorry, a physical exertion that wears me out. Now it absolutely can, but for me, it's the mental exertion that I'm just like exhausted straight away. Very quickly, I'll get run down. Oh, I love this highlighter. It's gonna do a little blend with the beauty blender. But yeah, I get run down very, quickly. Now, since going on my career break, it hasn't really happened. Don't get me wrong, like the traveling did kind of take it out of me, especially towards the end of the year. I was like, wow, I am ready to just like sleep loads. I feel like when I'm in work, I am a lot of the time just run down and like my eyes will be streaming, my nose will be running, my eyes will be itchy. It's just not a, a comfortable time. I'm just gonna make sure this is all blended in nicely. But yeah, like then when I get run down, I get a cold sore and like that's a really, really common symptom, no, side effect of MS treatments. I remember like going on Tecfidera and now on Aquavis, I was just like, no! But it makes sense, like if you're bringing someone's immune system down and then they are getting sick or they are getting run down, that is gonna activate that virus. Do you know that sort of way? But again, like since going on my career break, that hasn't really happened. It is a shame that that is such a common side effect slash symptom because cold sores are fucking really sore. I'm gonna set my face with my setting spray. Just let that dry in there. I do only have two more points to mention. That's actually quite nice. Using my Charlotte Tilbury palette. Oh, I like that actually. I like this brush as well. I don't know where this brush is from. Got it years ago. So the next point is sudden fatigue. Like sometimes I'm going about my day absolutely grand and then I'll get this like massive wave of tiredness. 
and I'm like, I just have to like sit down for a while or like lie on the couch or just chill out and I'll get like, like my legs will be weak. My, I'll be just exhausted. It's just, it comes out of nowhere as well. Like, and you could be on an absolute roll that day. Could be doing loads or you might not even be doing anything. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just kind of comes out of nowhere usually happens in the evening for me for me personally i kind of want to do just using one of the eyeshadows and doing like a very very chunky slash blurry wing sorry i did most of that off camera because it was a little bit stressful so i'm just going to take some glitter and put that on my lid now it was a little bit stressful i just can't concentrate like i can't talk and do certain things at the same time mmm gorgeous gorgeous yeah that kind of sums up Good catch, good catch. Excellent catch, Jesse. Oh my God, I've dug my nails into the fucking shimmer. I'm actually raging, but it's okay because I caught it and it didn't smash. Oh my God, it's all under my nails. It's all under my nails. It's all under my nails. <laughs> this is a bit hectic, isn't it? Oh, another thing actually, another example. I'm not even sure what this example falls under, but like I always double book things. Like I've twice booked festivals on the same day that I have another event on. Like I booked Westlife as a present. I booked three tickets the same time that I was supposed to be going to Boomtown. And then I also booked all together now the same weekend that I was meant to go to a musical with my sister. I've done it so many times with appointments and I've had to like reschedule ones then. Again, it's not that it's not in the calendar. It absolutely is in the calendar. It's just, I forget. I just sometimes forget to check my calendar. Like, ow, sorry. Now I have two left. Okay, I'm just gonna put some mascara on and then talk about the last two points. This next one is related to like spinning things and vertigo. Now, I wouldn't get vertigo just in my day-to-day -day life, but I cannot, cannot do anything spinny. Like I can't go on chair planes at festivals, which you know, it's not the end of the world. It really isn't. But like I can't, like if I went to some sort of theme park, I wouldn't be able to go on spinny things. That nausea that I feel when I have that slight motion sickness, it just reminds me of my first relapse where I lost control of my eyes and everything in the room was spinning. I had the worst nausea and vomiting from that. So any sort of sensation that reminds me of that, it's just... It's a horrible, horrible feeling. Like I wouldn't experience it just from like sitting here or like in my day-to-day -day life. But like if I get that, like if I was to spin on a chair now, that would that would be hell. Like I just can't go back to that feeling. No, I don't get sick, but like it's just that horrible feeling. Again, it's nothing compared to what I would experience during a relapse, but it's just that like, oh no, I couldn't, I won't put myself in a position to remind me of that feeling. Mascara done. I might just do my lips now. Oh, I got some new lip liners from Cash Beauty. So I might use, they're like two brown ones. I'm like, mm. I'm like, I might go for the darker one. <gasps> and I tested this on my hand earlier and it was, just went on like butter. Went on so well, like look at that already. Whoa, that's dark, I love it. So the last one is, sorry, I'm just gonna put on lip gloss now. The last one is like relating to balance. It's not horrendous. Like I never would get up and like fall to the side. That would only happen if I was having a relapse. But like there is a slight difference in my balance, I personally think. Like I can feel it when I do yoga. Like I can feel that it's not as good as what it was. I don't know, maybe, maybe it can improve. I'm not 100% sure. Definitely exercise is incredible for ms in terms of like your muscles and coordination and all that but i'm not sure when there's like permanent damage done like you can't necessarily reverse it but i do think that like the likes of yoga does help with balance but like i can notice myself that there is a difference in this it's only ever so slightly but it's it's still something that's different to the to the way it was before ms you're such a fucking hoe. I love it. Okay, so that's the finished look. I'm actually very happy with that. I love that lip liner. Oh yes, girl, slay. I used the plumping one, hee <laughs> hee. No doubt that when I'm looking back on this, I probably will be like, oh, I forgot to say X, Y, and Z, but sure look, it's part of having MS. Yeah, just to emphasize that these symptoms aren't the symptoms that I have during relapse. Don't get me wrong, I will have those symptoms. <laughs> I will have all of those symptoms, but I will have a, like so much more symptoms when I go into relapse. I'm lucky in the sense that 
I have recovered from my relapses. Their defo is like, let's say when I get my Aquavis infusion, my right leg gets really weak, which is the leg that was really affected during my first relapse. Or like, if I am exhausted, it, that is the leg that is affected more so than my left leg. But for the most part, I, I have fully recovered from those relapses in terms of like physical disability. Obviously things are way worse when I go into relapse. But that's all for now. I just wanted to share that, share those pieces of information to hopefully kind of show what it's like to live with an MS in like everyday life. Again, this is not gonna be the same for someone else. Like each person with MS is different and the the disease affects them differently. I'm lucky in the sense that I don't get that like heat sensitivity. A lot of people when they're like exposed to hot temperatures, their MS symptoms are way more prevalent. I haven't experienced that, like even during a relapse, but I know that that is a pretty common one that a lot of people suffer with. Yeah, hopefully that's kind of giving you an insight into how the disease impacts me day to day. If people want like a video on a list of all the symptoms I've had, while having a relapse, let me know. Like obviously I have spoken about my attacks. I have an MS diagnosis video. I'll leave a link below so you can watch it there if you want. But I can talk about the different symptoms that I've had while having a relapse. Like the symptoms that really made it aware to me that something had changed in my body. <laughs> something had changed overnight but yeah that's all i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it was educational and i shall see you all in the next video bye